I welcome you on the behalf of 61st AICOG 2018 from Bhubaneswar. You are watching this interview on the therightdoctors.com. With me is Dr. Minu Agarwal. Ma'am is National Director of Clinical Board at Morpheus IVF. She has brought up a very good topic and she is working on infertility. So we wanted to take her expertise and opinions in uh, IVF protocols, what are the ART techniques she uses in her practice. So ma'am, what are the protocols which you follow for infertile patient ma'am, especially if we stress upon PCOS women because that is becoming very common in India. Whenever we are doing, uh, there are two ways to do things. One is that we are doing IVF for the patient and the other thing is that maybe the patient is going for some other treatment like an IUI or sometimes a timed contact what we call it. So if the patient is going in for IVF, then in a PCOS patient we would use an antagonist protocol. There are two types of protocols in IVF. One is an agonist protocol and one is an antagonist protocol. In agonist protocol, we first give the patient a gonadotropin, uh, a, a suppressant like a lupride or something to make the ovaries sleep and then we stimulate the ovaries, right? The only challenge in a PCO patient, especially if they have a high AMH, if they are a younger age group patients, they have a high chance to go into hyperstimulation syndrome. So if we have given them agonist already, and then we give them gonadotrophins, we have to give them a trigger with SCG. And SCG is the culprit for the OHSS. Right. But in an antagonist protocol, what we do is we first give them gonadotrophins, we can use HMG or FSS, and then we give them, we can give them a trigger with agonist because they are not sensitized to agonist because there is an initial flare up with agonist which happens of the LH. So we want the high LH for the ovulation to happen which will not happen in an agonist protocol. So for all patients who have PCOD with high AMH, younger age group, patients who have a history of ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome, patients who um, like sometimes donors who are young, again younger and a good ovarian reserve, all these patients should preferably go for an antagonist protocol and at the time of the trigger we can decide whether we want to give a trigger with agonist or with SCG because both can be used. The only challenge when we are using an agonist trigger is that all the embryos need to be frozen and then they are transferred in the next cycle. So a good counselling to the patient is important whether when we are using an agonist trigger. So can we say ma'am with the use of agonist protocol, OHS is absolutely zero or will it be negligible to See, if the patient is young, uh, thin, PCO, uh, has like say 35, 40 uh, big M2 oocytes, these patients, in spite of giving an agonist trigger, we have to be on the guard to look for, monitor and prevent OHSs because this can happen even in an uh, agonist trigger. Right. Uh, what about these dual protocols? We are hearing a lot uh, about these dual protocols, use of multiple protocols. Do you advise uh, such multiple use protocols? Man? See, um, the new theories are coming up wherein they say it is not that the ovaries produce eggs only once in the month. So there are multiple cycles which are initiated all the time. It is okay. in a waveform. Okay, so it was actually uh, suggested and um, uh, by uh, Dr. Peter Humay Humaydan and he came out with a dual stimulation especially in poor responders. So what they do is they give um, gonadotrophins, they can use antagonist protocol, then they give the trigger, they harvest the eggs. After harvesting the eggs in the same cycle, not in the next cycle, they again after four days start the stimulation and uh, again start the stimulation and give the trigger and again do a pickup for this patient. So this is called a duo stimulation, wherein maybe we can uh, maybe harvest more number of eggs for these patients. Uh, I have used it for a couple of patients after I came back from Mishre and I heard this, his talk and I was very impressed. But somehow I felt that our Indian patients are more comfortable with the regular protocols. Uh, only if the patient is coming from overseas and does not have time and want to finish very fast, we can do it. But we cannot transfer in the same cycle. We have to freeze all the embryos and transfer in the next cycle. 
Ma'am, what is your uh, key one or two messages? What you want to give to upcoming PG students or the upcoming doctors uh, who want to take IVF as a career, ma'am? Well, IVF uh, it looks very glamorous. It looks very, uh, very. Of course, it is interesting, uh, but. Um, uh, all the PG students I would like to say they all want to get into endoscopy they all want to get into IVF they most of them do not want to do obstetrics so um, still now we don't have that kind of a division where obstetrics is itself a multi special a super speciality and IVF is a super speciality and endoscopy is a super speciality but yes I'm sure a day will come when there will be only obstetricians specialized in obstetrics and then there will be only IVF consultants and only endoscopy consultants um, I do both endoscopy and IVF and I feel it is a very good combination um, but yes um, with more and more um, uh, technology coming in we'll probably have a more of divisions in these right, fields. Uh, well, thank you, ma'am. Thanks for your time, ma'am. Thank you so much. Hope to meet you again.